Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, going to be on the electricity tariff um, uh, news. Um, sometime uh, last week, there were reports of a possible increase in the electricity tariff from the 1st of September. But the EKEDC and its spokesperson have come out to state that that might be false. And also in the news this morning, Festus Kayamo had stated that the government is not aware of any planned increment. We're speaking with uh, Professor Kenneth Mwike. He's a, a political analyst and professor of politics and governance at the Ignatius Adjuru University of Education. Good morning, uh, Professor Ken. All right, I hope you can hear us clearly. We're also speaking with Daga Tola from the, he's a spokesman movement of socialist alternatives. Good morning, Mr. Tola. Yeah, good morning, Africa, plus Africa, and good morning, all Nigerians. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope we can yeah, get yeah. better sound quality from uh, Professor Kenneth. But let's start with Daga Tola. There's, of course, a lot of Nigerians were worried last week. Um, we've, you know, complained, or Nigerians have complained about the high cost of leaving. Um, and, of course, continued increment in electricity tariff. Um, so let me start with your thoughts. Uh, do you think that these things are inevitable, you know, seeing the way that the country is currently moving? And, you know, would Nigerians need to always pay higher to get better electricity? Let me make it quite clear that I do not agree with that narrative. Uh, I don't think that increase in the pump price of fuel, uh, increase in the pump price of electricity or, or new increase in tariff in electricity will resolve any of the contradictions plaguing these key sectors. Interestingly, it's extremely very painful that the ruling class in this part of the world is not even learning any lessons from its own history and from the fact that all of these policies, since they've been implemented all through these decades, have not resolved any of the contradictions. Uh, the, the history of the increase of pump price of fuel, for an example, didn't just start now. Interestingly, the Buhari regime, when it first came into power in 1984 to 1985, didn't follow these paths. All of the increases we have had through the austerity measure of the Sheikh Shagari regime, through to the structural adjustment program of the Babangida regime, and now to the policy of deregulations and privatizations, which are the policies dictating all of these programs by the, by the ruling elite, has not in any way provided any increase for regular electricity for Nigerians. Interestingly, according to the World Bank, statistics from the World Bank, Nigeria is still ranked 171 in a count of 190 countries. Uh, access to electricity in Nigeria is still largely restricted to the urban areas. You know, in a population, access of a country of 200 million plus, only 85 million Nigerians have access to water electricity. So the fact speaks otherwise in relation to these policies and, and, and programs. This singular narrative that there is no alternative to capitalism, you know, where the resources of society, the resources of this country can be muzzled, can be employed to serve as the basis to develop the economy, to provide electricity, to provide, to drive power, to drive energy, to drive steel production, to drive the basis for industri industrialization of this country, then the ruling elites, on the basis of their own doctrines and philosophy, will practically have no other choice than to continue with this destructive policy of further destroying the, the Nigerian economy more further. All right. Um, Professor, Professor Kenneth Winky, welcome once again. Uh, Professor Wakey, can you hear us? Yeah, Wake. I can hear you. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us once again. Um, I want you, you to you. share your thoughts on the investments in electricity. Sometime in February 2021, there was the World Bank statement that they were assisting Nigerians with uh, $500 million. We've also heard about the Siemens you know, loan and Siemens, um, you know, about $3 billion also, um, assistance to the Nigerian government with regards to you know, electricity also. But this year, and in the last long while, we've ha had um, you know, a few times than normal where the power grid collapses. Why do you think we still aren't getting it right with fixing Nigeria's electricity or power sector challenges? Yeah, thank you. Um, I get uh, worried, especially when you talked about the Siemens uh, contract, because uh, that was uh, one of the... Um, visits that uh, our former chief of staff, Abakiri, 
travel to Germany. And uh, so when you, when you talk about Siemens uh, contract, talk, talk about electricity and all that, then uh, that uh, reminds me of uh, that untimely death of our chief of staff, you know, because uh, Nigeria needed power at all costs from, uh, I, I think that, that necessitated that visit and all that. So it clearly shows that um, Nigeria, uh, the investments in the power sector in Nigeria uh, uh, you know, have been very, very slow, you know, in yielding the desired uh, dividends. Um, I know how much um, uh, that we, we, you know, was sunk into the power sector uh, during the Obasanjo administration in Nigeria, you know, between 1999 and 2007. And so, and then subsequently, a lot of um, investments have been made in, in the power sector in Nigeria, even given uh, what you are also uh, raising now. So, but power has been very, very epileptic in Nigeria. And then the issue of tariff is not about increasing the tariffs that uh, is the problem. Nigerians are, are, are tired about uh, these investments that are yielding little or no, you know, dividends. By now, we should be talking about having 24 hour, you know, electricity supply in Nigeria, given the enormity of the uh, funds, you know, sunk in, into the power sector. And so, so uh, and I know that the Siemens contract uh, was going to last up, uh, until 2024 or so, but this is 2022, um, and I believe that um, if that contract is uh, still in place and that um, the government is very, very serious about that contract, we should be getting updates regarding uh, what the Siemens uh, is doing and then what the funds that uh, uh, are coming from the World Bank, you know, in order to assist Nigeria, you know, get out of uh, out of the woods. But I think that irrespective of uh, whatever funds that have been deployed into the power sector, if there is no political will on the part of the executive, um, including uh, the legislature, who um, that, that uh, does oversight on, 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 on the power sector, then, and then Nigerians themselves, who should uh, be doing what uh, they should be doing in terms of checking the excesses of those or the weaknesses of those who ought to do these things, then we will not realize anything. And that's why I think that this uh, conversation uh, today is something that uh, should be a reminder to those who have been entrusted in, uh, with this uh, responsibility to brace up. All right, Dagatola, back to you. Uh, we, we, of course, have had, um, you know, we, the country has made its moves uh, to fix the power sector. Privatization was one of them. Um, you know, we now have uh, uh, distribution companies uh, privately run. Um, why would you say that this might still not be working? And also, we've not still, over time, been able to generate as much as 10,000 megawatts of electricity for a country of 200 million people. Um, isn't, is, is that in any way embarrassing, you know, that we still are having these lapses, the power grid still collapses every, you know, four market days, and yet we're talking about incrementing tariff? I'm extremely excited when you pose uh, this manner of question. <laughs> the, what we are confronting here is, is the contradiction in the capitalist system itself. Because what is privatization? What is capitalism? It is run singularly for the purpose of making profit. And painfully for all of us, 80 to 90% of all of the entire resources that has been invested in electricity in Nigeria are public funds. But like Prof has pointed out, the ruling elites lack the appropriate you know, philosophical framework of the necessary goodwill with which to ensure that the private sector, uh, with which to ensure that the electricity sector and indeed all sectors of the economy functions appropriately. More loans, additional loans have been procured. And you ask yourself, if we are running a private electricity managed economy, what is the business of the state employing the entirety of all of its trusts and its resources to invest in electricity, and yet it, it, it lacks the moral will to protect that investment and ensure that the necessary electricity is what is provided. Uh, and, and this is why we will continue to say that there is no sector of the Nigerian economy that is not plagued with crisis. And all of, none of these issues can be resolved in isolation of a comprehensive interlinked of all sectors of the economy.
Electricity needs to be developed. Energy needs to be developed. The means of production, industrialization needs to take place. Steel production needs to take place. And none of these key vital sectors can be run effectively and efficiently without putting profit first by the private sector. And the moment profit is placed first and foremost, it becomes a defeatist logic that ensures that it will not function effectively to allow the mass of the working people to assess all of these basic needs that are essential for economic development, you know, for the entirety of the mass of the people in the Nigerian society. Professor Nweke, I'm going back to you now. We continue to have a problem. One of the things that I read up yesterday was that regulation and funding are two major issues with the regulation, infrastructure and funding were two major issues uh, with the, uh, Nigeria's electricity sector. Um, quickly, let me know what you think about how the NERC can better regulate uh, the um, sector and how we maybe can redirect the funding for electricity um, so we can achieve better results. The National Electricity Regulation uh, Regulatory Agency, for me, um, has not done well. Because uh, it behoves that it has that responsibility, you know, to give Nigeria, I mean, to do everything possible because a regulatory authority to ensure that power. And so, what what you hear every other time, the average man on the street is uh, when you hear of uh, the uh, regulatory authority, you are talking about increase in tariff. That's what they are known. Either they are giving a nod to it, or they are not giving a nod to it. We are not interested as Nigerians about the, the tariff. For the average Nigeria, what we will need is to see if you, you are showing me a pictorial uh, evidence of uh, power running, right? In a bulb, with a bulb, uh, through the bulb, okay. and all that. So we should have that 24 hours, for goodness sake. I can still remember uh, as far back as 2009 when I made the first trip to Togo in Olome. There was life, you know, 24 hours. In 2009, Throughout one week, I stayed in Lome. I didn't see light, you know, the, the, the power blink for one second and all that. In 2009. And then we are still talking about that 11 years or more down the ladder that we are still struggling with electricity. It, the best rate we are having today is 10 hours, you know, per, I mean, within 10 hours out of 24 hours and all that. That's the best. And that you, we are celebrating so much. And so the National Electricity um, Agency ought to sit up. It's not the issue of increasing tariffs that matter. Nigerians are sick and tired of increasing the tariffs. What we want to see is power. We want to see power. We want to see, you know, um, a, a reflection of the normative. Oh, you are still bringing this box that is showing, that is not, I mean, <laughs> you are showing me this historical evidence of 24 hour, you know, uh, power in Nigeria that does not, you know, uh, um, um, does not take us to anywhere. See, for me, the National Electricity Regulatory uh, Agency ought to sit up, you know, and then ensure that the funding in the power sector is, you know, uh, guaranteed. The, the regulation uh, or regulatory uh, practices or policies in the power sector, you know, uh, make it possible for private investors to take up the challenge of um, 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 ensuring that power is deployed to Nigeria. It is not sitting down there and telling us whether tariff will uh, happen in September or it will happen in June. And then even the National Assembly will come up to say, oh, no, 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 no. slow down on the charge uh, of uh, tariff and all that. Yes, I know that uh, we have a, uh, they have a responsibility in terms of oversight. But the National Assembly has every responsibility because that is a, the, the, the arm of government that is I mean, charged with responsibility of oversighting what the executive is doing in this regard. It is not about uh, stopping them or not stopping them. It's about sitting down with these guys and say, how do you, you know, deploy your policies towards ensuring that, you know, power sector attracts more funding and that it's not just attracting more funding, but to ensure that the infrastructure that is adequate for uh, guaranteeing to the four hour power supply is, you know, in place in Nigeria. And then that your policies you know, uh, should not be anti uh, or anti um, investor and all that, a private investor. And so, by so doing, you will see a lot of people coming to look at the um, uh, telecommunication today. You know, uh, you see how it's soaring everywhere. So, why can't we, you know, uh, look at the magic that we, 
a bit or perform in the uh, telecommunication sector and apply same to the power sector. If you come, for instance, to River State or High State or in Port Harcourt, you can privatize you know, a, a whole lot of uh, Port Harcourt or some you know, local government and all that. Let the uh, private individual take the responsibility of distributing this power and they will let us know who they are and all that. Not given uh, one company that you say is a distribution company. The other one is the power generating and all that. If that is to the extent that uh, Nigerians know. But if you privatize, you know, the power sector in such a way that, you know, a lot of investors will come in and then uh, uh, different locations, different organizations um, and all that. These com competitions will come in. And so deregulate, you know, the power sector in such a way that um, um, we, we have in the uh, telecommunication sector, including the deregulation you are talking about in the petroleum industry. That is the sure way of guaranteeing you know, 24 hour power supply in Nigeria and not the way we are going you know, this way. And then I've said several that it takes a political, I mean, the political will on the part of the executive arm of government you know, to ensure that this thing called 24 hour power uh, supply. In fact, Nigerians are not even looking for 24 hours, we are even looking for just 18 hours actually. That will be okay for us right. as Nigerians that we are because power sector drives the other sectors you know, of the economy. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Professor Kenneth Winking is a political analyst and professor of politics and governance at the Ignatius Ajuru University of Education. We also spoke with uh, Doug uh, Dagatola, spokesman, Movement for Socialist Alternative. Thank you both for being with us this Monday morning and always looking forward to having conversations with you. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is where we will be wrapping up the breakfast this morning. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you missed out on any of these conversations, you know where to find us. It's uh, pretty simple, at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And you can also uh, find, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. See you tomorrow.